Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Maze of Troll Tips and Tricks. If this is your first time here, my name is Phil, and I teach people how to set up and run a Mazak CNC lathe while programming it with Maze of Troll. This next video idea is from a viewer's suggestion. Joe asked if there is a way to mill some flats on the middle of a shaft on a machine that does not have a Y axis. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to program the machine to cut a hex in the middle of a shaft using a right angle holder with the ball end mill taking small cut step overs. This method will take a lot longer to cut this feature than a machine with a Y axis, but this technique does work for our older machines. This is not something the machine was originally programmed to do from Mazak, so we have to do a little bit of lying to the control to make it work. Stick with me and I'll show you how. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, the first thing we're going to do is push the left button, go to Program, Program File, and select a work number that's not listed up here. We're going to work with Program 51. So go back to Program, Work Number 51, Input. If it's a new program, push the Program button. Mazatrol, Workpiece Materials Aluminum, Max outside diameter workpiece. I have a 1.25 inch shaft. Inside is zero. Uh, the workpiece length, I'm going to say, is uh, four inches long. Uh, max spindle RPM limit. This is the G50 for the turning side, not the milling side. But we still need to put something in here. So let's do our usual 2,000 RPM. Finish allowance on X, Z, and the face is all the turning operations. This program is going to concentrate on the milling, so I don't need any of those things. So down arrow, left button, M code, current cooling on, down arrow. So now let's get into programming a hex. So here's the information we need. We have a 1 inch 250 shaft and we're going to program a 1.1 inch flat across it. So what we need to do is program to the corners of the hex and not to the flats. So that's how Mazak programs a hex, is to the corners. So the B dimension is 1.1 divided by 2 is 0.550. The C dimension is what we need to program. So all we do is we take the B dimension times 1.1547 equals our C dimension. So 0.550 times 1.1547 equals 0.635. So from the center out to here is 0.635. So let's go ahead and start programming that now. So push the left ar the right arrows twice and what we're going to do is we're going to use the right geom uh, cutter comp. Normally we would use left cutter comp but because we're going to use a right angle tool and if I cut it counterclockwise it's actually going to be on the left side of the end mill. And again, we're doing some lying to the machine, so we're going to push the right cutter comp. And then we're not doing an out, we're doing a face according to what the machine thinks is happening. So push face, uh, the width of the groove. This is the end mill that we're using, and we're using a quarter inch wide end mill with a 125 ball. So width of the groove is 0.250. The cutting depth, so on this first example, so what I'm going to do on this first process is because we're using a ball end mill and we're going to cut this, the first pass is going to be full width cut. So what I want to do is go into a depth of only one thousandths Uh, finish allowance on axis direction, leave that at zero. Auto. 
So feed rate for roughing, so this is the feed rate that it's going to go around here. I'm going to go with five thousandths, and feed rate for roughing in the axis direction is going to be uh, the positioning move. It's no longer a depth move. Uh, I'll just go 10. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a finish tool of tool 15, offset 1. So now let's look at tool 15. So tool 15 is an angle milling out. So I'm describing the tool correctly here. And the most important thing is having the diameter right here at 0.250. If this number is not the size of the end mill, then the cutter comp is not going to work. So right here, that's the diameter of the end mill and we must have that for this to work. So now what we're going to do is draw the hex and it's going to be a line and we're going to use polar coordinates. So starting point, uh, radius of X is going to be our 0.635 dimension. Starting point, angle of the C is going to be zero and we're going to start at the face of the part but we're not going to set z zero on the face of the part so that's another thing that we're going to do to lie the machine so we're going to say zero here final point is 0.635 and final point is going to be a positive 60 degrees so line 0 0.635, 120 degrees. So basically, we're going to start here at zero. We're going to go 60, 120, 180, 240, 300, and 360. Shape in, right button, figure check. Scale, display mode. And we're going to zoom it in. So on the side, we only went in one thousandth. And then there's our shape. So now what we're going to do, so this, this process here is going to do the plunge cut. And then the next process, we're going to copy this down. So right button, process copy, workpiece number 51, process number two. And our cutting depth is going to be 400 thousandths and our finish finish allowance is going to be zero because I'm going to finish it with the roughing tool so tool 15 and I'm going to delete this one so basically everything is just going to be a rough pass so it's going to cut across it. So this is going to plunge the first one, and this one is going to do the step overs. So what we need to do is go into the tool data page, tool file, and then right here on the end mill, so cutting depth. So this depth right here 
is going to give us a 20 thousandths roughing pass for each time it goes around. So this is important because if this number is an inch or something like that, it's going to take it in one pass and it's not going to cut down the, down the flat. So if you want a smaller step over, change this to 10 thousandths. If you want a bigger step over, change this. So on the newer machines, the depth of cut is controlled in the program. On the old T3, it's actually buried into this tool file page. So now let's go and go to the program check and then shape. So there's the remaining hex and check continue. So there's the first pass at 10 at 1000 steep. The next one is 20, 40, 60, 80, and so forth. So there's all the passes that it's doing. And between each pass, it rapids back to the 50,000th clearance plane, comes back, cut, takes a cut, rapids back, and rapids forward. So what I'm going to do, because I wanted to cut in the center of the shaft, I did not want the tool to rapid all the way to X0 or Z0 and back three inches each time. I'm going to set my zero in the middle of the part. Again, that's not normally done, but for this example, this is what I'm going to do. Again, this is part of lying to the machine. You gotta be careful with it. So let me show you how to do that. So right now, let's set the work shift, call up the program, and let's run it. So right now we're two inches and 999 away from our zero of our part. One of the things I forgot to show you guys is this tool is set correctly, but because we're using it in a different orientation, we actually need to cut, to come in here and put a minus 0.250 in the wear offset for tool 15. So this is the same diameter as the tool because right now the tool is probed so this end of the end mill is X0 but X0 for an axial tool is actually in the center of that radius. So we need to put in a negative 250 into the wear in order for this to cut correct. Or we could put it in the geometry, but I prefer not to because the tool is set X and Z properly. And again, we're lying to the machine, so give it a minus 250 on the wear. So now, Let's bring up the end mill. So 
So we're actually going to cut starting right here at zero and then we're going to move inward 400 thousandths. So we got plenty of room around this tool. So let's go ahead and run it now. Auto, we're going to turn on the coolant. And let's go. And there's our part with a hex right in the middle of the shaft. If you guys like what you see, go ahead and push that subscribe button and click the bell so you won't miss any future videos we have coming out. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That helps out my channel and gets YouTube to share this video with more people. Also, if you guys have suggestions for future videos, please let me know down in the comments. Thanks again for watching.